Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him, he will bring forth much fruit. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. God's word for our consideration as we continue to prepare our hearts to welcome our Savior this Advent Sunday is our second lesson that we heard a few minutes ago found in St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 15. Paul writes, May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you. This is the word of our Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, our coming Savior, dear friends. Last Sunday, I talked about a few things that I don't particularly like about winter, especially the fact that um, we have such shortened hours of daylight. Well, at the risk of sounding like I don't like anything about winter, which isn't quite true, (laughs) I got something else, another beef against winter this morning, and that's this, the lack of fruit. I know there's still fruit at the produce section of the grocery store. You can still buy fruit. In fact, this time of year, some fruit is when it's ripe, like the the citrus fruit comes in in wintertime. But I'm thinking of the summer fruit that we enjoy, you know, something like the the Palisade peaches that we wait all summer for or the the Rocky Ford melons or the, the, the juicy berries that come from California and Oregon and Washington that, that are in such abundance during the summer months. This time of year, they're just not there. Yeah, you can get some of those things in the grocery store, but you know, they don't come from here. They come from, well, the southern hemisphere where it's summertime, you know, places like Chile, which means that they're not going to taste as good. They're going to be a lot more expensive. Yeah, fruit's kind of hard to come by. Summer fruit this time of the year. But there's another fruit, one that is available this time of year or should be. In fact, this fruit is ready all year long. It's not a fruit you're going to find in the produce aisle. It's not one you bite into. Rather, it's the fruit that that John the Baptist was talking about in our gospel this morning. It is what we would call Advent fruit. Advent fruit is what Advent believers produce. Advent believers are those who are ready for Christ's coming, ready to celebrate His coming as a baby in Bethlehem at Christmas, but ready at all times to meet Him again as He comes to judge all people. Those who are ready for Christ's coming are going to show that they're ready by what they say and what they do. Advent Christians produce Advent fruit. This morning, as we continue preparing our hearts for Christ's coming, let's listen to what God's Word says to us today about this Advent fruit. Let's find out, first of all, where it comes from, and second of all, what it looks like. In our first lesson this morning, the prophet Isaiah talked about a stump of Jesse. What he was talking about was the, the, the line, the family of a man named Jesse. Jesse was the father of King David. That was a dynasty in Israel. They ruled over Israel and later Judah as kings for hundreds and hundreds of years. But by about the year 600 or so, that line was pretty much cut off. The dynasty came to an end. Five centuries before the birth of Christ, there were no more kings from the descendants of Jesse and David it looked like a, a, like a stump, like a tree that had been cut down, leaving nothing behind but a stump. That stump appeared to be lifeless, but that wasn't the case. There was still life in that stump. No, there would be no more political rulers that would come from that dynasty, but there would be one who would come out of that dynasty, a, a, a shoot that would spring up from that 
seemingly dead stump. Yeah, they, they, it wasn't as if there were no more descendants of Jesse and David. There were plenty of them, including one by the name of Mary, who came about a thousand years after David, who had a little baby boy named Jesus. That's the shoot that came out of that seemingly lifeless stump that Isaiah was talking about. It's interesting to note that Isaiah speaks of both the shoot that came from the stump of Jesse as well as the root of that stump being the same one. That's because Jesus is both God and man. As God, he is the root of Jesse, meaning he's the God who gives life. He gave life to Jesse and David and all their descendants. He's the one that placed David on the throne as well as his descendants. But Jesus is also true human. He came as a baby, taking on our human flesh. He can trace his human ancestry then back to David and Jesse, the shoot that came from the stump of Jesse. And here's where our Advent fruit connection comes in. Jesus is that shoot, that, that branch that came from the line of David. Those twigs that are connected to that branch are going to bring forth fruit. Just like a, a, a branch of an apple tree, the twigs that are connected to that are going to produce apples. So we who trust in Jesus, the descendant of Jesse and David, also produce fruit in our lives. That's what John the Baptist was speaking of in our gospel this morning. He said, bring forth, produce fruits in keeping with repentance. You know, if you're going to summarize the, the message and ministry of John the Baptist in one word, it would be the word repent. To repent means, first of all, to recognize our sins, to recognize that we sin and recognize what those sins are to God, an offense to our Creator, something worthy of punishment eternally. Repentance then will lead to confessing. We confess to our God and to each other, when appropriate and necessary, those sins. But repentance doesn't stop there. Repentance isn't just about feeling bad. Repentance then turns to Christ, the shoot from the line of Jesse, for forgiveness. Repentance believes, accepts, and embraces that full and free forgiveness. But there's more to repentance than that. Those who recognize their sins, confess them, turn to Christ for forgiveness, are going to automatically naturally produce fruits. They're going to say things and do things and not say things and not do things because of their connection with Christ, because they are forgiven. That's the Advent fruit we're talking about. As Advent believers, we are to produce fruits of faith. John the Baptist made it clear that these fruits of repentance are not optional. It's not as if we have the, an option of whether or not we want to say and do things that please God or not. If you're connected to Christ, you will do them. In fact, John said, those who don't are going to be cut down and thrown into the fire. But understand this. An apple tree doesn't produce apples because it's afraid of being thrown into the fire. It produces apples because it's an apple tree. In the same way, Advent Christians, we who are ready for Christ's coming, we don't produce these fruits of faith because we're afraid of being thrown into the fire of hell. And it's not as if we do those things so that we earn his forgiveness. Just the opposite. Because we are forgiven, we produce these fruits of faith. We do them in a word, in a word that St. Paul in our second lesson uses a repeatedly, again and again and again throughout that reading, the word hope. This kind of hope isn't simply an optimistic wish for something better. It is instead a confidence. 
a confident trust in future blessings. That's why we produce fruits of faith, fruits of repentance, because we are confident that Christ who came took away our sins. We are confident that Christ will come again and take us to be with him. We are confident of a crown of life that Christ promises to us. That's the kind of hope that Advent Christians have in their heart. That's the kind of hope that results in fruit. Yeah, our lives on earth sometimes don't look all that royal and they don't feel that way, but Advent Christians know we have a crown waiting for us. We will live and reign with Christ forever. That's our hope. That's why we say things and do things that are pleasing to God and serving one another. That's why we don't say things and don't do things that displease our God or hurt other people. That's where Advent fruit comes from. It comes from Advent hearts. Hearts that are connected to Christ, our Savior. But what do these fruits look like? What exactly are we talking about? You know, it's easy to identify summer fruit. I mean, we all know what the, you know, the peaches and the, and the grapes that come in the summertime, we know what they look like. But what does Advent fruit look like? What is it that God wants us to say and do? Or what is it that he forbids us from saying or doing or thinking? Well, I think a, a quick answer to that question would be turn to the Ten Commandments. Or to summarize the Ten Commandments, love the Lord your God perfectly, love your neighbor as yourself perfectly. But in our second lesson this morning, St. Paul describes one particular variety of Advent fruit in a little bit more detail. He says, accept one another just as Christ accepted you. I think that's maybe one of the hardest Advent fruits to produce in our lives, accepting other people who are different than we are. I think that's especially hard today because, as you know, we live in a world, in a society that is so divided. We're divided along racial lines and along economic lines and maybe more than anything else along political lines. And these divisions are getting deeper and wider with each passing day, it seems. And I'm afraid that those divisions that are, are, are not just things that are out there in the world, but sometimes they find their way into the church as well. And that should not be. Our Lord, the one who's coming we celebrate, the one who's coming again we're ready for, says, accept each other as I have accepted you. Now understand what he's not saying there. When St. Paul urges us to accept one another, he, he isn't using that phrase the way we often hear it used today, meaning, namely, accept sin. Accept others or our own sins or actions that are defiant of God and going against his will. That's not fruits that God's people should produce. Accepting sinful behavior that defies our, our creator and goes in the exact opposite direction that he has us go in. That's not loving. That's not noble. God doesn't accept sin. That's why he sent Jesus. Jesus didn't come into this world to accept sin. He came into this world to pay for sin. Jesus didn't come here to tolerate sinners. He came to transform sinners. Instead, the accepting one another, this particular fruit of repentance, this Advent fruit, means not letting differences of how we look or whom we vote for or what team we root for or what our likes and dislikes are get in the way of recognizing that we have something else that we do have in common with all who are Advent Christians, all who believe in Jesus who came, all who look forward to his coming again. We are united by our connection with Christ. Together, together we serve him. Together we build each other up in the service of God and one another. That is an Advent fruit 
a particularly tasty Advent fruit. It's going to be probably another six months before we see the summer fruits that we all like. That's too bad. But may that not be true of the fruits of our lives, our Advent fruit. That's the kind of fruit that is available in winter and spring and summer and fall. It's a fruit that God expects of us. It is fruit that we produce, and it's tasty. Amen.